the Hisense U8H to the left, the LG C1 to the right. Now, we've kind of already seen how this TV does an amazing job against OLED in the last comparison, but in this one, because they're about the same price, people have been asking, which one do you buy? So I kind of wanted to give that answer. So smack like on this video for just getting to the point. Now, the point is, like, if you like color, the Hisense is going to provide better color overall um, in terms of skin tones, in terms of color palettry, it's just going to look better. Now, I want to pause here. Now, some people are going to see this and they're going to be like, this is this is ridiculous. My my C1 doesn't look like this. And, and I really want to point this out because what ends up happening in these comparisons, when I show stark differences like this, like look at how dead, right? Let's try to line this up better, okay? Look at how dead her skin tone is right here. It actually looks dead like that in real life versus the Hisense that looks so much better. People immediately dismiss this like that is not the case. If you are taking an LG C1 out of the box, this is what it looks like, and this is the picture everybody rants and raves about. And yes, to answer the question, this is in filmmaker mode. So as you guys see, filmmaker mode right here. Don't know if you can see it, but it's definitely in filmmaker mode. So a lot of people like to gaslight and pretend like I'm not in filmmaker mode when I show these things off, and you can see it right down here, filmmaker mode, right? Okay. Um, that's what they're calling the reference accurate look. It literally looks terrible. Now, the camera's picking up slightly more blue than it, what I'm seeing on my end, but as far as the differences between the two, it really is that vast. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like once you put in proper settings that don't adhere to the reference calibrations that these so-called experts stick to. This is what it looks like after. So as you can clearly see, there's a lot of change that has happened in this image. And if we hit play, you can kind of see, again, there's a lot of change that has happened to the picture. To put it closer to what we get on quantum dot televisions, giving it a much more aesthetically pleasing look, better colors, things like that, that it just by itself out of the gate does not have. So when I tell you guys like, yo, this is a beyond reference calibration. This is what I'm talking about. The ability to go in and change certain aspects of the picture quality to help it compete better with something that has quantum dots. But as you're clearly seeing, the quantum dot advantage is massive. Every vibrant shade that you're seeing here is beautiful. It looks fantastic. Not to say that LG is doing a terrible job at all. I love my C1, but there are things that the Hisense is getting more correct. Now, we're going to walk you through a little bit more of a play-by-play, -play, but I did want you guys to know, again, this is not a stock comparison, so just keep that in mind as you're watching the duration of this comparison. In terms of black levels, both TVs are fantastic, but obviously the LG C1 takes the cake. So when we look at the Hisense U8H, it's pretty much what we would expect from an LED in terms of blooming off angle. But on angle, that's where it gets surprising because it's pretty damn perfect. I mean, like, I don't see any blooming, and it holds very closely to what we get detail-wise with the LG C1, the S95B. I mean, these are top-tier OLEDs. It has better reproduction of some colors, as you're seeing here. I mean, it just does a fantastic job all around, and honestly, as time goes on and this TV becomes cheaper, it is ultimately going to start becoming a no-brainer because, I mean, really, that's the thing that you got to think about. Another thing that I find that's like a, a nice little bonus is that the sound quality that comes out of this TV is spectacular. What I'll do is I'll take the remote and I'll just turn up my little demo here and just try to plug in your headphones and listen to this part. I'm not joking. Sound is amazing. We'll stop at like 20. get the idea. The sound quality on this thing is ridiculous, and it only gets better from there. And you have the tunable subwoofer. And that's not something that LG gives you. So while they have Dolby Atmos, the, you're kind of limited in that all you get is an equalizer, where this you have like literally a separate subwoofer tuner built into the menu. That adds so much value in the sense of what you're able to get out of it. And then again, 
you have molds that you can mess around with and things like that. So it's it's a nice experience. But again, when we're talking about darkroom experience, we're talking about features, the Hisense is giving you the best value here. And I think like in terms of value, like truly, like it's hard to justify spending the extra money to jump up to OLED if you don't necessarily need to. Now I've gone ahead and super over exaggerated my camera sensitivity to light or ISO so that you're able to see how much more grain the Hisense UAG has on low bitrate content, or rather not UAG, the H, U8H. I hate these names, okay? But you can see the difference versus the LG C1. And I mean, look at just how much more grain, massive chunks of grain. But now here's where it gets interesting because when we hit play here on this YouTube video, look at how the grain just kind of moves. It's almost clean on the LG, but on the Hisense, not so much. So again, when I say from a processing perspective, that's what Hisense needs to work on. I'm not joking. Like that's that's like their one really big Achilles heel. But now counteractively, of course, once you get out of like near black scenes like that, I think that, that had to have been like 5% near black. So that's very rare to run into on normal content that's not demo, trying to make something look better. Um, and again, the LG still had noise too. It's just better at cleaning noise than the Hisense. So that's something you're going to have to keep in mind for like over the air TV shows, older DVDs, things like that. The Hisense is just not going to be better than the LG in terms of pure straight up processing and noise reduction. In terms of movie content, the win is going to go to the LG C1 because it gives you a lot more of that deep black and cinematic nature that you're going to expect from a movie experience. But again, as you saw in a dark room, the Hisense doesn't have any problems. But again, it, it's when we get to particularly movie content, I find the handling on certain colors are a bit better, and that's where it might make all the difference for you. As far as the video game aspect goes, I would say that they're both kind of comparable in that like the Hisense is going to be better for shadow detail, which I guess if you play a lot of dark games, this is going to be the TV you want to get by far, especially because it's independent black level adjustment and white level adjustment really comes in handy, right? But then on the other hand, the LG is just 3D, like the depth coming off of the LG is way more than anything my camera can capture and way more than what the Hisense is capable of pushing out. So in that aspect, then it becomes like for video games, like you definitely want yourself a C1 because it's like the ultimate experience. And then of course, like colors get crazy vibrant because of course that OLED black level. But again, the Hisense isn't that far behind. Like I look over at the Hisense and I'm like, it's not being left behind to the point of like me not wanting anything to do with the Hisense. And that's usually what happens with these budget TV comparisons, um, you know, value TV comparisons against something more high end like a C1. So the, the gap is kind of being bridged a lot more with mini LED than again, what most people are gonna be willing to tell you. And I think this is the closest LED has really ever been, you know, to an OLED. And, and we're just talking from like dead center viewing, because again, Viewing angles all day, every day, the high sense is going to lose. But again, when we talk about colors and all that stuff, I think you can see how they're pretty similar and how, in some instances, like now, the high sense is slaughtering the LG. And that's where it gets, like, I kid you not, it gets so hard because it's the ultimate game of back and forth that I end up not really knowing what to do. In terms of sports, the motion on the LG C1 is going to be substantially better. And I mean like day and night better. Unfortunately for Hisense, they're just not as good with that fast panning sports motion. So if you're somebody that is buying this TV for sports, it's not necessarily going to be the TV for that. I've mentioned that against the S95B. And the same thing does still hold true for this comparison as well. Unfortunately, though, it's a shame because the colors are better than the LG C1 for sports. So that's where it kind of sucks because now you really have to sit there and try to mess around with motion if you want like the better color. Because by far, the color is just day and night superior on the S, or rather, what are the, the Hisense U8H versus the LG C1. I mean, like, dude, bro, look at, bro, look at the, look at the difference. It's like, wow, right? Like, that's way different, okay? And, and I think that's really what's going to get a lot of people, like, surprised here. Now, again, to show you in dramatic effect fashion, so you can see the difference. Like, this is what happens if you go and you don't use a wider color space because you know we don't like those. So we're gonna go one, 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 three, one, 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 and we're gonna go back to Brex 709. Like that, that's what it's gonna look like. It looks even more dead. 
And I'm telling you right now, like, that's not how anybody wants to watch their game, like, straight up. I mean, maybe, maybe I could just be speaking incorrectly, and there's a guy out there that really likes dead-looking people running across the field, but I don't know. I would like to think that, like, everybody would want what the Hisense is doing right now. Like, grass looks like real grass we've seen before. The only problem with the Hisense is motion isn't as good as the LG, and there is a bit of a day and night difference when they start panning really, really fast, as you see, like... Though, oddly enough, now, I have to mention this, it, it, it kind of gets to a point where it's a little tough because in that instance there, the Hisense did better with that type of panning. So look at the LG, chop, 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 right? But the Hisense remained smooth. So it's now confusing because it's like, this is, this is why this comparison has my mind so boggled. One, literally, one second ago, they'll do something better than the high sense for motion. And then with different types of geometry that are, that are introduced on the screen, whether it's the angle in which the, the, the football lines fall or whatever, right? The yard lines, okay? It, it, it changes so much and it's so infuriating because if they could just be consistent, that'd be wonderful. So this entire comparison may in fact feel like flip-flopping and I'm, believe me, I'm there with you, but like you cannot help but report on the active changes that each display makes so please try to keep that in mind but either way now that's one of those things you have to keep in mind but overall consistently speaking though the LG does do a better job more consistently with panning motion than the Hisense like now the Hisense is more jittery as they're running closer to the frame um, as they're panning more a little bit rougher on the LG there now it's kind of about the same. So it's again, it, it's it trades off too much. I would say like both are kind of comparable, but there is a slight edge to the LG. But again, is it worth the markup? That only you can decide. When you watch demos like this, it'll become apparent that the high sense is again able to, in certain examples, put out more contrast and more color than what LG is capable of producing. I'm gonna pause right here. Look at the depth coming off of the Hisense to the left. It's destroying everything the LG C1 is capable of producing. Like, the C1 is just not able to keep up. Now, I don't know if this is because it's trying to keep things bright, because OLED usually suffers from, you know, being dim when you get to certain examples like this, but just look at the day and night difference. Like, it's getting bodied, like absolutely destroyed. And again, there, at some point, there's kind of nothing it can do about that because, again, it's not using quantum dots and its color isn't going to be the same as quantum dots, right? But it's still good color. It's just not as good as what we have on the Hisense here. I mean, like, look at these roses coming in right now. They both look really comparable, but again, when you get to examples like this, it's that extra highlight detail coming in around the flowers that really, it's making all the difference in the world, where LG is dimmer significantly by example. And I think, again, this is gonna play a role across multiple types of scenes. And so it's not just as simple as, oh, well, OLED has perfect black, or OLED has the viewing angle advantage, because it's like, that does not always mean that in every example you can put up on these two TVs that it's going to be a slam dunk. I mean, look at the ground right now. The ground looks so much better on the high sense. I mean, it just does. Now, you're not going to be able to see much from this. The camera is not getting it accurate. So this particular moment right now, not really the best for either, right? But as we start to look at foliage, right, we pause. We look and we can see the multitude of color, right? All the variations of green where on LG, it's not quite as refined, right? So I think that again is gonna play a role here. Now, counteractively though, the ground, I know you can't really see this, but the, the color brown here is so much better on LG where on the Hisense over here, it just kind of appears a little bit more like a palish yellow color. Not necessarily yellow, but by comparison to the LG C1, it looks a little bit more palish. And, and these are nuances in color that you have to pick up on. I mean, this is perfect. You can see probably a lot better here. Like th this is what, again, depending on what you watch, like if you watch a lot of like, I don't know, anime with fighting scenes, right? And they're kicking up a lot of dust. Well, it's probably gonna look better right here with the, the refinements of that reproduction of color. But again, if you watch a lot of scenes with a lot of reds, LG has never really been known for their red reproduction. Like that is their biggest weakness, and it still is when they go up against quantum dot TVs. So I think like it, it, it tomato, tomato, I guess for some people, but again, like looking at the green, which one looks more like a stock of broccoli, I guess? I mean, I would I would say that that looks more realistic, right? Where again, LG, because of the WRGB, 
nature of the panel. It just isn't able to reproduce every single color perfectly. And I think that's the thing, like when you go up against something that's actually QLED, real quantum dot color, this is where it starts to struggle and fall apart. But again, all day, every day, LG does a great job with blues. But again, it's not to say like, it's so great for blues that like nothing can ever be accurate or more accurate. Now again, my camera is getting this example wrong. Everything looks green, but it doesn't look like that right now. But in terms of, again, picture quality, what you're getting for the money, I genuinely think both are solid TVs and you really can't go wrong either way. Again, it just, again, look at this scene, like, right? Like as they're, as she's running through the field, like as I look at this, there is way more depth coming off of this TV right now. So you know those examples where I showed you, a, you know, earlier on in the video how LG has more depth and they're looking more colorful. You see what I mean when I say like it genuinely trades back and forth way too much to say like the C1 takes it because yeah, the C1's fantastic, but when you get to brighter scenes, the brighter scenes tend to do way better on the LED in terms of not only like look at the contrast, but like every blade of grass is refined where on the C1, I don't have that much detail. Now, a lot of people are under the misconception that pixel level illumination means no matter what, you're always going to have the best rendering of contrast, not understanding that like algorithmically these TVs and these companies choose what they prioritize the processing to do. In English, that just means right now I can see LG is prioritizing keeping the grass bright and keeping that background really bright. They're not necessarily prioritizing all of the foreground stuff. And that's really kind of what matters most in these situations where Hisense and their processing, they're worried about that more. Again, it is one of those things that you are going to have to pay more attention to. Though I can tell that LG is putting more emphasis on the subject here. So she's properly exposed, everything looks great. But again, it's such a tiny subject that it kind of doesn't matter in the bigger scheme of things. So again, it's all about the algorithmic processing that companies choose. But like, look at this right now. You can't tell me that this isn't a slaughter on the LG C1 right now with the way the greens are produced and things like that. And again, that's what I mean when I say like, don't just take this as like a slam dunk for LG or a slam dunk for Hisense. Because again, as we look, like we're literally looking at both apples to apples, like it is what it is, right? You can't make this stuff up. So hopefully by showing this off, it helps you guys out. If you have questions, drop them in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. I'm going to have to call this one out a tie. I don't think either one does better than the other one. But again, given how close the Hisense is, I can't do anything but call this out a tie. So until the next video, I'll see you guys later.